everybody. Welcome back to Eating at April's. Today I'm going to cook something for the first time. It's cut cakes and tomato sauce. Got my Xerox here. And it's from Jerusalem, a cookbook by an author who was a New York Times bestseller and also wrote a cookbook called Plenty. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this name correctly. Yotam Otolenghi. And it's 120 recipes exploring the flavors of Jerusalem. These fish cakes are a fish cake that I'm not used to making because usually I make fish cakes with the fish already cooked. You use raw chopped fish for this. So I'll talk a little bit about this and then we'll get started. You make uh, the tomato sauce separately from the fish cakes and you start the tomato sauce first. I made a half of a batch. Um, if you're local, Central Ohio, you can uh, go up to the Westerville Public Library and uh, reserve a copy of this so that you can preview this wonderful, wonderful book. The tomato sauce calls for cumin, paprika, coriander, chopped onion, a little bit of dry white wine, which I don't have, so I'm going to omit it or just put in a little water if I need. A uh, can of chopped tomatoes, and I'm using freshly chopped tomatoes from the garden. Yes, Vashti. Um, it calls for a red chili seeded and finely chopped, and I don't have that either. So I mix a little chili powder with red pepper, or you can use shiraka. Or this wonderful thing here, it's a chili garlic sauce. Um, it's distributed from California, but this is, a, this is an Asian sauce, and it's got your whole chili seeds in there with the garlic paste. It's wonderful. And then the recipe also calls for garlic, just a little bit of sugar, freshly chopped mint, salt, and a little bit of pepper, which I almost forgot about. So that's for the tomato sauce. And the, um, the cod cakes themselves are the, the chopped up cod, or you can also use halibut, hag, or pollock, um, with a little bit of ground up bread, some onion, some garlic cloves, parsley, which I don't have either, so I'm, I, I use some dried. Uh, cilantro, which is one of my favorite things to cook with. Cumin, salt, eggs, and then olive oil for frying. Okay, let's get started. This pan over here. Now this is a dish that's made in two different pans, and I'll have a little extra special ingredient. We're gonna chop her up and throw her in there too. <laughs> That's little Miss Vashti. Okay. I'm going to tilt this a little bit so that you can see I am doing. The first thing we're going to do is put some oil in this pan. Turn on the heat. Get that, get that oil nice and warm. And the first thing that happens is you're just going to put in your spices and your onion and let that cook. So I've got them right here. See, this is my mixed up of the substitute for the chilies and then the, the cumin and the coriander, which I positively love. Now, since I have these ceramic pans, I'm going to use a wooden spoon. You can use whatever you want for that. There we go. Now some people will put the uh, onion in once the pan is very hot. And I suppose some recipes call for that, but that's not something that I usually do. So onions first. And spices. Mix those up very nicely. Now I'm going to be referring to my paper a lot since this is my very first time cooking this. This is made a very nice, almost like a paste. Mixing these spices in directly with the onions and getting the spices started cooking early on in the recipe is going to give them a nice smoky robust flavor. Smells good. Okay. 
One thing that I like to do when I'm using um, these kind of onions is if I was too lazy to separate them by hand before I put them in the pan, I just like to mash them up a little bit with this. My mother could never understand why I wanted to separate the onions in the pan. She said they would come apart quite nicely all on their own without all of that, and I'm sure they do, but I'm just too impatient. So that's cooking nicely. It smells very nice. They specifically call for olive oil when you put this in here, and I assume that that means a light olive oil so that you don't get that heavy flavor from that extra virgin olive oil in this because I'm not sure that extra virgin is going to go well with these spices. So you just want to soften these. And the recipe says to soften for 10 minutes, but I've got this on high heat. And as I told you before, I'm fairly impatient. So I'm just going to give it a few minutes to soften before I throw everything else in. One of the ingredients that this calls for is freshly chopped mint. And um, I cheat when I chop my mint. I roll the leaves up and snip them with kitchen scissors as opposed to being all fancy and using a knife. One of my friends, Missy, chops like a pro and she can just chop that mint up so fine with her and I just, I have my scissors. <sighs> um, mint is, in my opinion, an underused ingredient in American cooking and people could benefit from use, learning to use it more. Okay, that's as soft as I'm going to make those. Okay, it says to add wine and simmer for three minutes. I have, at my house, I have cooking sherry and I have a sweet white wine. I, I don't want the sweetness. So what I'm going to use instead is just a teeny little bit of water and a teeny little bit of vinegar. So it costs for it costs for a half a cup of wine. So I'm going to use. Remember, I'm doing I'm doing half of the recipe here. So I'll just use a little bit of vinegar with a quarter cup of water. Too much for my taste. You know what I'm going to do? Instead of all water with vinegar, I do have I have a little bit of um, Marin, which is a cooking wine. So I use a tiny bit of that. Also. There we go. Okay. So that'll give it that little bit of acid that the dry wine would have. I just want to reduce that just a little bit. Okay, now the mint goes in. Get a scald on that before we throw the tomatoes in. Now my tomato soup that I make also has fresh chopped mint in it. It's just a wonderful combination. Oh, that smells sensational. Okay. A bit of salt. A bit of pepper. Well, in my house, a lot of pepper. Now 
little bit of sugar. Yeah. Mix that all in. Okay, so this here we have the base, the base sauce. Then we're gonna throw those tomatoes in too and let those reduce together. The garlic gets added with the tomatoes, which is new to me. Usually you put the garlic in with the onion. Not for this. Okay, here we go. Stir that all up nicely. Beautiful. Okay. Yeah. While this is cooking, we're going to get started on the fish cakes. Here we have this chopped up fresh raw fish. We have our breadcrumbs mixed with the salt and then the cumin here. Put that in. We have our onion and our fresh cilantro and our dried instead of fresh parsley. I'm gonna put that in there. And next what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna heat the oil in this pan for the fish cakes. Ninety percent of this recipe is chopping everything and getting ready. You see how quickly it's going once we get started. Add my egg. Now these onions I'm gonna have to crunch up by hand. Cut this up just a little bit. Um, while everything's heating, I'm just mashing everything together to make these amazing fish cakes themselves. Oh, that smells wonderful. The cumin mixed with the cilantro, it's a wonderful combination. And the recipe said that these fish cakes have to be extremely wet. These are soaking wet. Um, they say that if they are brittle, you can put them in the refrigerator to harden up just a little bit, but I don't think we're gonna need that. And this came together very, very quickly. So once this oil is ready, we'll be ready to go. Frying those up. Okay, now the sauce is cooking a little fast for my taste, so I'm gonna turn the heat down. A little more oil than what I used. So I'm getting a definite tanginess about this tomato sauce. A lot of spices that are in there. I have never used cumin with mint. I love the way it's smelling. Okay, here we go. And I'm going to tilt this back down so you can look at the fish cakes. There we go. So this is cooking along nicely. Okay, so these fish cakes look like a whole lot of nothing. This is supposed to make four fish cakes. It's going to be big. I'm going to do two at a time in this pan. You know what? I'm going to use even more oil. See, that's frying up nicely already. It's going to saturate them real good. The wonderful thing about these pans is the bottom is white. You can see everything so clearly. Very nice. Okay, so what they want you to do is to just sear these for a few minutes on both sides and then plop them in there. Just gotta add a little bit 
bit more water. And I would like some more tomato myself. That's what I'm going to do right now. These are fresh out of my garden. I would recommend doubling this sauce recipe. Have a little bit more sauce than fish cakes because this smells amazing. Fish smells very good too. As I said earlier, this combination of spices is something that I'm just not used to. It smells great. Turn that up just a little bit. Now turning these fish cakes, they're, they're looking a little bit brittle, but that's all right. So I'm going to use just a teeny bit more salt in this. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to throw some of this in because I think it sounds nice. It's my first time opening it. I've used this many times over the years. You can get this at your local um, Asian grocery store. And it is spicy, so a little bit is going to go a long ways. Good flavor. Yeah. You know, what you can also do is you can certainly puree this tomato sauce if you want to do that. See how nicely this is coming together. You know, anytime you want a tomato sauce, you want to try to make a fresh one. It comes together so nicely. Be careful about turning this. There we go. Oop. Easier said than done. Now this is really crumbly. I would recommend putting these in the fridge to, to solidify them before frying them up. There we go. There we go. This sauce smells like paradise right now. Put a little bit more water in that. Teeny bit more oil. Salt, pepper, there we go. Stir that up for me. See how quickly this is coming together? We're 20 minutes in from the beginning. And Now keep in mind, your fish was raw when you got it started. If you're like me and you make fish cakes, you can always cook the fish first and just sear it on either side to pull it together. But I really do recommend popping it in the fridge to solidify. I didn't do that and you saw it fall apart in the pan. This one's okay though. Okay, so. Have these go right in here. And it is time to do the other two fish cakes. I do not want to use the same oil, so I'm not going to. It's not going to, because I don't want to. Put 
this point I'm just going to pull this off here because what you have to do with this sauce, this sauce, what you're going to do after you finish your last two cakes is you're going to put them in the sauce and then you're going to put the sauce on very low heat covered for 20 minutes. And I don't want the sauce to reduce too much. That's why I say uh, you really need to double, double this sauce recipe because these cakes cook up to a lot. Um, in my house, we like a lot of sauce. If you're going to go to the trouble to make a homemade sauce, make a lot of it. And if you don't eat it all, freeze it. This is tomato sauce. This will freeze well. Okay. So I'm going to just take a little taste of this. It looks beautiful. That's a very good sauce. It's uh, nice and spicy since we put all the chilies in. Um, just a touch of sweetness. Um, I'm going to put a little bit more salt in there myself, and I would uh, personally, personally doing this, I don't like the, uh, I don't like the idea of putting wine in it, but that is something that a lot of people love. This is good. This is very good. I would use less sweet stuff. I would just uh, omit the sugar and put in a little more salt and extra mint. I'll be throwing a little more mint in that. So time for the second round of fish cakes. These are huge. nicely when you go take a bite and I've got some of the uh, got some of the tomato sauce on it Jerusalem, a cookbook. 